You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series and syndicating for the A-List online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith and I've got a very special guest to share with you on this instalment of the show. It's Bez. He's from the Happy Mondays, the UK legends. The reason for the conversation is to promote the Happy Mondays upcoming tour of Australia, which is occurring in March of 2019. I'll read out some dates. The first one is on the 2nd of March in Perth, Sunday the 3rd, Adelaide, Thursday the 7th in Brisbane, Friday the 8th in Sydney, and finally Saturday the 9th, Melbourne, you've got a show. So let's hear what he has to say. Here we go. Hello. Hey, it's Andy McKay-Smith calling. How are you going? Good. I've got Bez here with me, ready to go. Wonderful. All right, I'm ready. How do you, Andy? How are you, mate? Hello, mate. How's things? How was the uh, the conversation with Miff Warhurst just then? Yeah, no, this is uh, the girl from New Oh, that was Georgia. Oh, Nick from uh, Black Sheep, was it? <laughs> oh, my name, sorry? Uh, well, uh, you know, I have spoken to a few people this morning. I can't remember who's name. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. Mate, how's it been? I'll ask the obvious question first. How's the old, uh, the Australian media types been treating you? Have we been treating you well? Have you had fun? Yeah, yeah, everyone's been really nice and kind and uh, looking forward to our visit in February, March, which we, we, we are also ourselves. Wonderful, wonderful. So, mate, I'll kick things off proper. Tell me about the show you're bringing down. Because I understand that you're playing Pills and Thrills and Belly Aches, an album that I, I, I still love to this day. And you, you probably have, have an awareness that there's a lot of fans down here in Australia that that album is very special to. But beyond playing that album there, what else can we expect from the show? Uh, well, I, I can say if, you, if you're coming along to any of the shows, you're possibly going to see us at our best. Because uh, in the past... Uh, Sometimes they could have been great. A lot of times they're that rubbish because they're all that off our heads. They weren't that great of a show. Mm. So it, uh, you're going to get us at our best. Sean singing uh, as the best he's ever sung. Mark uh, has got such a uh, unique style of his own on the guitar. He's playing brilliantly. And we've got the original lineup, of course. And then uh, you've got me doing the creaky dancing rather than creaky <laughs> dancing. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, the band, the Happy Mondays, you've been credited with creating and popularising the crossover of rock and acid house music, massively influential. You've you've directly influenced Oasis and most of the artists that would go on to be described as Britpop. So you've got a tremendous legacy there. But is there an aspect of the band that you think has been overlooked by critics and by some fans? Um, no, no. Well, we, we, we've been given such great accolades. Uh, yeah, we're 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 even surprised by it ourselves because as young men, when we when we first set off, we we could have never dreamt of uh, uh, the position that we we got ourselves into, and yeah. uh, and and it's so amazing that uh, all these years later that we're out, we're able to uh, still play and, and do what we do. Mm. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Now, I was looking through the list of interesting episodes that have happened throughout the band's history. There's a few sources. Wikipedia is one of them, of course. There are so many things that have happened to you, so many episodes that have occurred in and around the band, particularly during the band's heyday, if you don't mind me calling that, in the late 80s and the early early 90s. The band, as far as I'm concerned, embodied a live-for-now manifesto. You are firmly rooted in the present. So I must ask, mate, you've had a lot of hairy moments. So do you think? did you think that you'd still be here doing it all these years later? Yeah, well, that's what I said before. I say it's absolutely incredible that uh, one that we're all still alive. Yep. Uh, two that we're still managing to to get get out there and play to uh, and play to a worldwide audience. You know. Mm. So yeah, uh, we've been incredibly uh, lucky, you know, to to be able to be able to do the things we're doing, and and all down really to to the fact that we've signed to uh, Factory Records. Yep. Tony Wilson, which was such an iconic label in Manchester at the time. And I, I remember as uh, kids, uh, before we got signed to them, we, uh, we were desperate to sign to Factory Records. It was like all our dream. And uh, one one day we turned up at uh, Peter Hook's uh, house and we knocked on nice. his door and he opened the door and seen us all standing there. He's like that. 
hey, I've got no money, lads. He was all that we come round get trying to get money off him. It was like, no, no, we just got a cassette to give you, uh, you know, listen to our music because uh, we, we really wanted to sign for Factory Records at the time. And we actually hounded everybody from Factory and uh, they, they took such a liking to us. Even mm. though we was absolutely rubbish at the time, we had uh, uh, very little understanding of music. Uh, we were so naive musically. Yep. And I think that's what it did us in the first place to them. Uh, uh, they actually signed us one night. So, yeah. Uh, Fantastic, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think it's uh, our connection to Factory Records what really catalyzed us into uh, uh, the people that we became. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's definitely been some raw talent there, and your music still holds up to this day. But I'm, I'm, I need to ask this question here. You've been doing it a long time, and you survived. But if you had your time over again, what would you change? Uh, I would change absolutely. Uh, there's nothing that would change. Uh, like I say, we, we, we've been so fortunate. We've had such good luck. Uh, why, why would you want to change that? And yeah. uh, you know, and the. Uh, like the days to live life with regrets, but uh, it, it will be a good way to go about it. But like to say, I won't change anything. Uh, uh, yeah, because uh, like, like I say, the meaning of life is to uh, to expand your awareness through experience, and uh, our, our, our way that we created our own awareness and reality is like being, being amazing. Yep, yep. Great response, actually, by the way, mate. And Look, there was one episode that I wanted to ask you more about. I'm compelled to ask you more about this episode here. So you might have told the story elsewhere, but I couldn't actually find online where you'd recounted it in any detail. But I understand that you actually hung out with Mick Jagger in Barbados way back when you were making Yes, Please, I think, in 1992. Is that the case? And, and what were you guys talking about back then when you were hanging out? Yeah, no, uh, that, 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 that's one of them uh, urban myths, I think. Oh, but okay. I have actually met Mick, Mick Jagger all one night. Uh, when it was out, he was uh, good friends with Joe Strummer, and uh, he used to knock, knock about with uh, all that uh, London scene. And uh, I actually went out one night with me, but uh, we never hung about him with him in Barbados, unfortunately. Okay, gotcha. Yep. One of the, yeah, one of those things that's printed on the internet that I always like to double check. Yeah, it. yeah. It's, Sounds uh, interesting. It's one of the best stuff in the car, like. Yeah. Look, an album that I like is Yes, Please. And I feel it's been unfairly unfairly pillared by hipsters and by indie journos far too young to give a shit or have even been around when it was released, but I was. So do you feel as though any of the criticism about the album has been justified? Well, yeah, I am the same as you. I think uh, uh, Yes, Please it was a, a great album. And uh, we recorded it with uh, Chris Brunson and Tima Weymouth. Again, uh, we was working with one of our uh, childhood heroes, Sock, Talking heads, you know what I mean, and to get yeah. to work with uh, them too. And the, I thought they brought the best out of us. And what it was, what people criticise that album is because uh, with, with Oakenfold and Osborne, yeah. we, we've done this uh, uh, groundbreaking album, as they call it, Soundwise, where we mixed uh, uh, the, the house sort of thing with rock and roll. And people wanted more of that, but uh, I actually think that album is a brilliant album myself. And when you go back and listen to it, 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 it holds it. Uh, uh, and, and we developed as well as a band. And also, it, it was the stepping stone to the future mm. because if the Monday uh, and broke up, because uh, uh, we, we went on to form Black Grace yes. with Kermit, and on that album was. Was, was that stepping stone into the future where we worked with Kermit and uh, and, and I thought Sean and Kermit uh, had such a good writing partnership and it, it got proven with Black Grape that that would have been the future of uh, the, the Happy Mondays because yep. that's the direction we was going in uh, and, and the, the next album we brought out uh, which was uh, Black Grape I think it's great to be straight it was actually one of our biggest selling records we ever ever had as a, as a band. Mm. Yeah, and famously, Lars Ulrich, around the time they released Load, that's Metallica's drummer, he actually said that was his favourite album of 1996, I think it was, or 1997. Yeah, yeah, well, for, for me, I, I'm the same as you. I, I thought it was a, a great album, 
I got unfairly slated because mm. uh, pe people was wanting uh, more of the same, you know what I mean? And then yeah, the well. bands to carry on doing the same thing, you know what I mean? We, yeah. we could have uh, yeah. we could have recorded another album that sounded like uh, 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 Pearl Shields and Belly Eight. But you were never like that. You were never a band to repeat. Yeah, yeah, we were always uh, looking forward and, and, and working with other producers. Uh, and uh, for me, I, I thought we, 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 we actually got better as a band for having that experience working with uh, Chris Constantino. You know what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. it, it was such beautiful, great people to work with. It was uh, a great experience for us. Yeah. Hey, just talking about your time with Tina Weymouth, the bassist from Talking Heads, so I understand she, I think she was a producer on Yes Please. Did she impart any advice to you back then that you're still using to this day? Because she's a, she's a tremendous musician. Yeah, she's a brilliant, like I said, yes, I, I think she improved uh, the band of musicianship with uh, the knowledge that she was passing on. Yeah. I, and, uh, and she was a great storyteller as well. And, uh, and, 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 and such a lovely couple, you know, to work with. And uh, we, uh, I forgot the name of the percussion player who, who played on, on the album as well. But he, he was absolutely amazing. He was in, in Talking Heads as well. So, mm. yeah, I, I, I thought um, they brought a lot. And they helped Sean out with his, with his storytelling back because he was always telling, explaining how... Um, no talking heads works as a band, and, and uh, they, they helped tremendously with, with, with that album. It was uh, like really, really like good, good people to work with. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Mate, I'll make this my final question. You, you're obviously aware, or hopefully you're aware, mate, that you do have a lot of fans down here in Australia, but what's your relationship like being with Australian fans over the years. So, so have you had a lot of Australians come up to you in the UK and talk to you about their love for the band and that sort of thing? Have we been a special uh, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, not really. Uh, we've been over here a couple of times. We, we was uh, fortunate enough to, to do uh, the Big Day Out tour. Yep. When, when the Big Day Out was, uh, was going. And that was really rememberable. Uh, they had some great bands up on the line up as well. And uh, yeah, that, that was a great experience. Uh, and we also played uh, another festival out here. Uh, can't remember the name name of the festival. But uh, yeah, uh, we we uh, we've had uh, yeah we've had a good response of the Australian people. Mm. And then, and, uh, and what I've noticed uh, though is uh, whilst I've been out here, is a lot a lot of our support come from the, the English expats what are all living out here just like um, yeah. <laughs> big English uh, so, so uh, yeah um, obviously we get a lot of support from, from uh, that direction as well yeah I think you're going to see a lot of Manchester United jerseys in the audience when you play yeah so more than like, like it yeah, yeah. but yeah uh, yeah everyone's we've been well received everyone's seated with kindness and uh, uh, I'd be really appreciated. So, yeah, we can't ask for more, really. Cool, mate. Well, I'm glad because you're legends and uh, I think your music suits the Australian climate so well. I had you on this morning as I was taking my kids to school, actually, and they're grooving along to it as well. Um, oh, that's good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such wonderful yeah, music. It suits our climate. Be educated, be youth. It's no. a good music today. <laughs> And I'm giving him a right education with your material, mate. So, so, mate, I'll let you go. Thank you so much for making the music you've made and good luck with the tour when you're coming back early next year. Yeah, well, well thanks for having us. Uh, and uh, uh, nice talking to you, mate, and hope to see you next year. Absolutely. I'll be in the Brisbane show. All right, mate. Catch you in a bit then. Okay, mate. Thanks very much. Bye. Cheers. Bye. You have been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series and syndicating for the A-List online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith, and that chat featured Bez from the UK outfit, Happy Mondays. Thanks so much for listening.